Hello and welcome to today's short video. I recently got uh, six samples sent to me by Pulp Addiction. These are six uh, inks from Noodlers that Pulp Addiction now stock. Now I've made it clear Noodlers isn't necessarily my favorite brand. I think there are some inks that have unusual properties and performance things and you know, it's not always consistent and all of that kind of stuff. But I wanted to show these inks because some of the colors are absolutely mind blowing. So let's have a look at them. I've got them on some cardstock as well as a little bit of Tom or River paper. So we'll start here with Baltimore Canyon Blue. This was a, a Baltimore Pen Show ink from 2020. It's now part of the Noodler's Standard line. This is a very nice blue. It's got some hits of sheen happening and things like that. It shades nicely. Um, it's not pronounced as having a whole lot of uh, extra features, just a nice sort of standard ink, but you can see here, beautiful rich blue, not dissimilar to the blue from something like uh, Liberty's Elysium from Goulet Pens, uh, and probably just a little less sort of vibrant blue than something like Bay State Blue. And just to put that into context, here it is on a coloring card alongside Waterman Serenity Blue. It gives a sense of some of that real vibrance, uh, particularly in that like lighter shading. It's really, really beautiful. Next, I have Noodler's Tchaikovsky. Now, uh, Tchaikovsky is obviously named after the Russian composer. Uh, this is a bulletproof uh, ink and apparently has some fluorescence to help, uh, you know, with its like, um, Forge proofness. This is a lovely earthy purple. I love purple inks. Got some nice shading, but we do see uh, some feathering and things like that from this ink occasionally. Uh, just to show the earthiness of it, here is alongside Diamond Monboto's hat, which is a much more vibrant purple and also shades a little bit darker. So it's a little bit more uniform. It's got a hint of gray in it, perhaps. Next, I'm looking at Noodler's King Philip Requiem. Uh, this ink is one of those ones that has really like odd properties. You can see how much this ink feathers, and this is Tom Moore River paper that it's on here. You can just see how much it feathers. It's a beautiful fuchsia color, a vibrant, rich color, really, really lovely, here alongside uh, Yamabudo from uh, Pilot of Refuzuku. You can see it's not dissimilar in some of the shading there, perhaps even more vibrant than Yamabudo. Doesn't sheen anything like Yamabudo, um, but lots and lots of feather. Uh, this ink is archival and permanent, um, but yes, lots and lots of feathering. Next, we look at Clairvoyance Slate. Now, this is another one of those uh, limited edition inks that's uh, basically become part of the standard lineup. This is from the 20, uh, 23, 2023 DC Pen Show. Uh, this is a really lovely color. Um, shades heavily, a bit glossy. Nice dark grey here alongside Van Diemen's ink, uh, Cradle Mountain from the Tasmania series. Um, lots of sort of dark greys and slaty colours, obviously, by the, the name. Um, just another very rich, dark grey ink. Next, we're looking at uh, Kuprin or Kuprin. Um, so this is named after the Russian author. Uh, and this ink uh, is forge resistant, fluorescent, water resistant, bulletproof, archival, and all of that good stuff. Um, it's an interesting ink. It's got an interesting sort of color. Here it is alongside Die Mine Writer's Blood. Um, I've never seen an ink shade quite like this on Tomo River. Um, instead of sort of shading kind of like if we look at sort of clairvoyant state here, you can see it shades on the heavy sections of the ink and then the lighter sections sort of move through. This sort of shaded in like clumps um, and it's very unusual. Noodlers certainly do interesting things with colors. It would be interesting to see the colors of these inks batch to batch, which is always a bit of an interesting uh, issue with Noodlers. And then the last of these inks today is Gold and Limonite. This is a... a inspired by the gold rush in Colorado, where uh, the ore was rich in uh, limonite. Even lovely sort of brownie quality. Here's another one where it sort of shades in an interesting way. I'm just putting this alongside a ready, a ready brown. So we've got uh, Montevideo pumpkin pie here. Um, it's a lot uh, It's a lot lighter, particularly in that like honey sort of color shade in there. It's almost a mustardy honey. It's very odd, um, but it's got a nice sort of color base. It's a dark gold color. So this one performs okay. It has some permanence. Uh, I haven't put any of these inks to the test. This is just what noodlers suggest about these inks. Um, but yes, an interesting color. Interesting inks. 
Um, thank you to Pop Prediction for sending me the samples of these to look at. Um, if you're interested in reviews of any of these in particular, let me know, I'll see what I can do. I just wanted to show you the colors here today. Noodlers isn't a brand that I use a whole lot. There's a few inks I use a lot. I use Blue Ghost for artwork. I occasionally will use uh, Zhivago for writing. You always get interesting colors, but you never really know what you're gonna get in terms of performance. Um, and so aside from personal reasons, it's not a brand I lean to a whole lot just because batch to batch, the inks can change quite a lot. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you get a sample of one of these inks, um, you know, it's probably best to then buy the ink relatively soon if you like it from the same retailer hoping that you got something from the same batch uh, but otherwise you know as i said they make interesting colors and uh inks with definitely very interesting properties so thank you for watching like and subscribe hit the notifications button all that kind of stuff in the meantime enjoy your inks enjoy writing and i'll talk to you soon